Hi guys, it's Mike here from KS Bushcraft Down Under. Today I thought I'd rattle you out a, a video about understanding your base load of your backpack. So, in the ultralight communities, I was certainly a part of it, there's different ways of determining base weight. Some of some they include your clothes, others it's just what you're carrying, excluding your clothes that you're wearing, and excluding food and fuel. But it all combines together to uh, to make up what you're going to carry on the trail. Now, if you're on a weekend hike and mild conditions and relatively even terrain, having a, a heavy backpack isn't the end of the world. But if you're on a through hike, and I spent nearly six weeks walking a thousand k's, and it does take its toll on your feet and your knees and all the rest of it. So understanding the weight of your gear helps you make decisions which suit you best. So I think the most important thing you can do is invest yourself in a cheap set of kitchen scales that do down to the gram, a marking pen. Now you can go further than that. You can get yourself an Excel spreadsheet and change out your gear to suit each different trip, which that was what I basically do. So I'll go through various ways of lightening your load or choosing your gear. Not really concerned about uh, cost. I mean, uh, some, there are some cheap options, there are expensive options in everything you look at, but also in the way that you carry stuff. Anyway guys, if you're interested, that's what's coming up. Well guys, I thought I'd look at my uh, bathroom gear. So this is the, uh, the kit I normally take. So this is a pretty compact one. <clears throat> so basically it tops out at 104 grams. So sit made by Cedar Summit, little pack tail. Now I do have much larger versions, but they're sort of 305 grams. In here, I've got a toothbrush cut down to fit inside the bag. One of those little uh, travel toothpastes. Now I have a plastic bottle in there that weighs 10 grams. I often have um, environmentally friendly liquid soap in there, which I can use to shave myself with. I do carry a razor for longer trips. And a, a pack towel. I like these, these like fit, you know, fleecy finish ones rather than the silky ones. I find them much better. Now, <clears throat> the bag itself is 15 grams. So it's 15% of the weight of the whole kit. So what I normally do is I ditch the bag and I replace it with an elastic, put everything inside the towel and put an elastic hairband around it. So 15% weight saving just on that simple task there. <clears throat> I can also change out the liquid soap for one of these little uh, bars that you pick up at hotels and stuff. And that whole thing weighs 17 grams. So according to this, the bar of soap is 20 grams, but anyway, <clears throat> there's a pretty lightweight kit. So by ditching that storage bag, and that's consistent, whether it be sleeping bag, storage bags, or clothes bags, or whatever, sometimes 10 or 15 percent of the weight of the item is the storage bag. Now, an empty toothpaste tube is 22 grams. So obviously, you, you wouldn't take it. Well, you may do if it is a, a long-term trip. <coughs> full toothpaste tube. Now in the past I have <coughs> put a full toothpaste tube into my food dryer and made little nuggets of uh, toothpaste. So one of these full is about 165 grams and dried out much much less than that. So there is food for thought. <coughs> now the paper roll inside the toilet roll is 4 grams. I know 4 grams isn't much but it's four grams that you don't, it serves no purpose. Now in the old days I used to just stand on the toilet roll to flatten it so I took up less space. Nowadays I stand on it and I tear this out. So four grams for no effort at all. Now this is the one of these pieces of gear I hate the most. So tough, rough, the old Kuglins pack towel. It's 55 grams and it serves one purpose. And that's obvious what that purpose is. I mean, it's a, an effective tool, don't worry about that. But, Jesus. 
So, my tent pegs, if I carry them that is, if I carry my tarp and I've got time and I've got a bushcraft knife, I just make my tent pegs. But these are the ones I normally carry, which are good for hard ground. These are 9 grams, 12 grams, and the ultralight titanium one is actually 13. So in this case, this is where your scales come into being. The ultralight titanium one is the second heaviest. Well, it's the heaviest of that lot. And instead of carrying the trowel, I carry two of these sand pegs. So this sand pegs 18 grams. So it's significant saving and it serves two purposes. Rather than just being a trowel, it's a tent peg and a trowel. So there's something to think about. Try and find gear that does multiple things. Or you can use it in multiple ways, even if it's not the best digging tool. It's a, uh, a good tent peg for sand. Well guys, continuing on our theory about bags. This here, this little compression sack, and it's quite a small one, weighs in at uh, 100 grams. This is what I used to carry my socks and underpants and stuff like that in. Because <clears throat> a fresh pair of socks, and there's nothing better than sleeping in fresh socks, I can tell you. It's a luxury that you really want. This, this pair of socks weighs in at 108 grams, so virtually the same weight as the compression sack. I mean, we've all, we all do it. We get our socks, and we turn them inside out. And it's about that big. It's quite large. Now, people that have been in the military will know straight away what I'm going to suggest. I'm going to suggest doing what they used to call a ranger roll, or military sock roll. And you can do that with your shirts as well, your pants. You can do it with everything. But it is a big advantage for stuff like socks. So, there's a the second pair of socks. Now, normally the heel will be sticking out like that. So, two pairs of socks. So, you want to tuck that in on the heel. Trim it in there. Trim it in there. Now, you can take this to a, a, another level, which I'm not going to do where two of you pull the socks really tight and for me that's just a bit over the top so I'll place the top pair about inch and a half, maybe two inches on top of the other I'll come start at the, the toe end and lay it on top like that I said you, you can take this really too far and I'll roll without assistance the best I can There are veterans out there cringing at the moment. And I'll grab this sock. I'll pull it around. So there it is there. So side by side you can see the difference in the volume taken up. So there's a good way of saving some space in your pack and cutting 100 grams. Well guys, we're going to move on to water containers. So I live in a hot, dry place. So water anxiety for us is a real thing. It's not uncommon for me to set out with three or four litres of water. And a litre of water is a kilo, and a kilo is 2.2 pounds. So the ways that you carry it soon add up. So like, like most guys, I started off many, many moons ago <coughs> with an army uh, canteen and a canteen cup. So the, the old plastic canteen, absolutely bomb-proof. Yeah? It's 156 grams cups at 270 and the whole unit together is about 430 grams so if you've got two of these yeah sometimes we have three <coughs> that's a significant amount of weight so at one point I replaced the canteen with one of these uh, Nalgene styles this is a Nalgene made in the USA Blackhawk it's a 133 gram so that's about an ounce lighter yeah, and these are, these are a great canteen, they're rough, tough, and a bit lighter. Now, when I was trekking in Nepal, we were dealing with boiling water. I didn't buy any bottled water back in 1995. I just got boiled water, for the sake of the environment. So we needed containers that would take boiling hot water. So this spun aluminium bottle by SIG, it's one of the older style ones, 
it's still 150 grams, so it's actually in between the weight of the, the first two canteens. So it's not as much lightweight as you think. Now at the same time, I also had a Nalogene bottle. Not this particular bottle, I finally retired that one. And I like these because they're the large neck on them. You can use them as storage or even as a, a dry container. But 183 grams. So you wouldn't want multiples. So now we're getting down to the light end. This is a, a two litre water bag. It need, needs retiring. But it's 33 grams or just over an ounce. That'll hold two litres of water. Right. So most of the times I have a small bottle I can reach in my pack. I went through a stage of using a hydration tube, it was really trendy, yeah. but I'm not that time pushed that I can't afford to put my pack down. If my pack's reasonably light it's quite easy to slip it off or I've got a small half litre bottle tucked away in a pack pocket I can pull out. Now the reason for that is obvious. The hydration tube, and this is off a platypus I think, is 70 grams. Now these things in the field over a long period, especially if you're putting anything in your uh, hydration bladder, like sugary stuff, get full of mold, they're a pig to clean, so don't use them anymore. And if you want to go cheap, this is a 1.25 litre pot bottle, I mean they're free, it's 38 grams. So really, the, uh, the platypus type packs, or a cheap plastic bottle, are the lightest. Now neither of these, I've used the, I have had boiling water in the platypuses, had no, no significant effect. I think the old Flexi Flask by Cedar Summit mentions microwave, freezing, boiling. Yeah. It's just as long as you don't fill it up to the screw cap. So yeah, it can handle boiling water. It probably has. <coughs> so there are some good options to uh, cut down your weight while you're still carrying your uh, water. Well guys, let's talk about cutlery. So, I suppose like many, <coughs> I started off with an army surplus three-piece set, weighs in at 126 grams. And there's very few meals they serve up that you really need a knife for. Or a fork. In the field, I think you can eat everything with a spoon. So, <coughs> solid piece of kit, lasts forever. But I mean, if you've got any form of knife with you, you really don't need to duplicate it. So that leaves you with uh, spoons and forks. So a lightweight plastic kit like this, tough, durable, 38 grams. But really, do you need more than the, the spoon? A sort of a, what's the Cedar Summit tools? Sort of a serrated knife and spork, 10 grams. Pretty good combo tool. A, uh, a normal Lexan spoon, about 10 grams again. Slightly smaller spoon, maybe good for uh, slowing you down at eating. Now, the only problem with short spoons is if you're eating out of the um, <coughs> freeze dried meals bags, you want a long one because otherwise your entire hand is inside. Or the uh, venerable snow peak spork, and I find this is the best spork on the market and that's at 15 grams so there's an easy way of saving 110 grams without any bother at all there you go, it's part of the five C's is the container this is a container that you can boil water in <coughs> so if, you wanna, if you're prepared to eat out of the same pot that you cook in so it usually means you're a solo Something like this uh, Snow Peak stainless steel kettle is retail for about 40 bucks in Australia. Now, the lid itself weighs 60 grams, and so you could replace that out with aluminum foil and save a couple of ounces. The pot itself, base pot, is 200 grams. Now, these are great little pots. They've got handles, hangers. This one, as you can see, has had a lot of hard use, and I'm quite happy to eat straight out of that. I have no issues at all. Now, <coughs> if you want to spend more money, you could step up like a, a MSR Titan kettle. So, the whole thing is 123 grams. 
You can save a fraction by replacing the lid with foil. And I'm happy to use this as a cook pot, you know, bowl to eat out of, and to drink my coffee out of it. <coughs> so there. So if you can do away with having a separate bowl, so here's three. This is a uh, see the summit foldable bowl. So it's compact. It's got this hard surface that you can't use as a cutting board as long as you don't run your knife through the silicon bit. So that would be tragic. It's 83 grams. <coughs> the uh, the GSI bowls, 62 grams. I've been using this in my car camping kit for ages. <coughs> and if you really want to spend money. 52 grams snow peak titanium bowl. But if you can do without that eating bowl, you'll be well ahead. And depending on your budget, it's a significant uh, weight and space saving. It's all about that multiple use stuff. Okay, guys, I've got to chat on stove systems. Now, it is a personal choice, and um, some things scale up, some things don't. So something like the MSR Pocket Rocket, it's a great little stove, I've been using it since they came out. <coughs> now, it's 122 grams in the box and 85 grams out of the box. So there again, there's a significant weight saving by replacing that with a plastic bag. It has great heat control. This can get a two litre pot of water up to the bowl really quickly. Of course, the downside is, <coughs> is the weight of the, c the cylinder. Now, gas has got a lot of energy per gram. That's why it beats meths. Now, the reason a lot of the through through hikers don't include their fuel weight is the sheer amount of metal aired spirits they crank through. So, gas is really up there. It's, it's clean, it's easy. <clears throat> but the true winner for, uh, for weight is the solid fuel tablets. But they're really good for boiling two cups of water. It really doesn't like scaling up from there. So it, it's a personal kit. <coughs> so both of these are reasonably affordable. So this stove weighs in at 87 grams. So it's comparable. And the fuel tablets are a bit, a bit slow, but yeah. <coughs> now this Snow Peak Giga Power, this has been going for yeah, about that 20 year period. It's 111 grams in the box and 89 grams out of the box. So if you replace this box with a snap lock bag and you've got a, a solid system. Now this one has a, uh, a piezo ignition. Now they don't tend to be, the most of the piezo ignitions I will say haven't been the most reliable for me in the field. So I always carry a combustion device to light them. Now you lose a little bit of gas every time you put it on the cylinder. So if you can pack it away, assemble it's even better. How's that? About 20 years of use. Now that the blooming is this liquid gas rolling around in the cylinder. But if you want to do some cooking, i.e. not boiling water but actually cook, having flame adjustment, real bonus. So this little stove really cranks, as does the pocket rocket by the way. So, pump pack stove, little pot, everything's possible. Well guys, on to the cutting tool. Now, if like me, you're travelling with tarp shelters and stuff like that, I need a tool that can uh, cut a piece of wood sufficiently you know, large enough to uh, string my tarp up. So, unlike in the videos you watch on YouTube, you never find two trees that are the perfect distance apart, and if you do, I always find that the tree root is digging your back. So you need to at least make one pole. <coughs> yeah. So, now this is a Victorinox SOS kit. It weighs 300 grams. So it's a brilliant kit. And has this knife in it. Of course the knife has got everything you might think of. From a wood saw, metal saw. Yeah, screwdrivers, magnifying glasses, but yeah, sharpening stone, pencil, matches, comfort rulers, ruler, but really belongs in the glove box. So, 
what do you really need? Now, if you're hiking, you'll likely be tackling canned food. So possibly a, um, a knife, something on the simpler side, another Victorinox climber. This is actually a, a compact, which has the blade, the multi-hook, a pair of scissors. Now these are great scissors, those. So if you're cutting plasters or opening freeze-dried bags or stuff like that, a set of scissors is, is fabulous. So 64 grams, simple knife. I mean, you probably don't need the corkscrew. Fortunately, there's none of the 91 millimeter range available without a corkscrew, and you probably don't need the shopping bag hook either. That, that's just a bit of a, a gap in the Victorian Ox range. Now, my personal choice is the uh, Victorian Ox Farmer. There again, the screwdriver and uh, can opener probably not needed. One of these days I'll knock up a custom without those that tool set, but it just seems strange to have not to have it. So 86 grams. Now this is an Openel Outdoor Junior, so the the point isn't isn't sharp. Well, not pointed. So not a great deal. I don't often need to stab something out in the bush. It weighs 46 grams, but does have a built-in whistle. Now these plastic handled Openels don't suffer from the wood swelling that the beechwood ones do. So the thing that does have a really good whistle in the handle, this is a good tool. Now the standard Openel, this is the uh, next size down, number 6, 28 grams, so under an ounce. Now this knife will do anything that you need around camp. It'll cut paracord, you could, you could cut your bandage material up with this. <clears throat> Yeah, you can make feather sticks. You can any basically anything you do for an ounce. And if you're really getting serious, for 20 grams, you could use one of these. But to me, when I head out bush, I want something reasonable. But there's nothing wrong with that. The thought process in that. So, plenty of lightweight options. Now, when it comes to repairing something, now the lighter in your gear gets, the more chance something breaks. So at uh, 50 odd grams, this is a Exotac rip spool, so it's got a uh, sewing line on the outside, it's got uh, duct tape on here, the, uh, the handle I think on the newer ones is a uh, has tinder inside, not sure about this one, over there while, and I put this little mini fire steel on the bottom. And on the inside, it's got a heavy duty needle. And in my case, a few fishing hooks and a couple of sinkers. So, this is basically my entire repair kit. Because believe me, I've had it in the past where uh, you know, backpacks have uh, failed and stitching's failed, or I've had to sew up a zipper. It's really good to be prepared for that. Now, a compass. This one here, 24 grams silver compass, so it's a good compass. It's uh, globally balanced, this model. So I've used it in the north, northern and southern hemisphere. No bubbles, moving nicely. So small, that's really, for most hikers, that's more than the compass you need. I originally started off with a military uh, prismatic compass and it weighed about 200 grams. So for me, this is all the compass that I require and working well with or without maps. Okay guys, a bit of lighting around camp or for any form of lighting. Now back in 1995 this Petzl Micro weighs in at 150 grams. I took with me on the Annapurna circuit in Nepal so with a, I think one change of batteries it lasted me a month. Now the joy of this headlamp, I mean apart from it's still working after all these years, it runs on two AA batteries which were easily available back in the day. Prior to that, AAAs weren't available, yeah. there's no electronics in it. Yeah. <clears throat> they used to have, well probably still do, a halogen bulb and a regular bulb, but I actually switched it out some years back for an LED, so it doesn't focus as well as it used to. But it's rock solid, still working, so 
that I... So, different types of batteries are much more available today than they were back then. So, 150 grams. Then about 2000, year, year 2000 came along, Petzl ticker. This is the first generation of them. There's, it doesn't uh, fold down or do anything like that. It's got a simple switch, stainless steel contacts. So it's on and it just slowly dims as the batteries go down. But <coughs> this is a brilliant light. So it's 74 grams, three AAA batteries. There's nothing to go wrong with it. It's been wet, it's been everywhere. Rock solid. So, moving forward sort of 20 years, the Petzl Actic Core. Now, unlike this one, that's basically has enough light for you to walk by, see in the bottom of your pack, do all those tasks you need. This one can do a lot more. So, a, a low light, yeah and basically burn possums out of a tree if, you need, if that's required. Now this one, of course, is fitted with a rechargeable battery that also drops out, so you can buy three AAA batteries and stick it straight in there. Won't be quite as bright on the high mode, but that is important. It has a whistle in the handle, in the headband. So it's 83 grams, plus if you want to recharge it in the field, you're going to need the cable and, of course, something to charge it off. And we step down to the the E light. So there's a total of 45 grams. So there again, the box is the, the kilo at 17 grams. It's a third of the weight, and 28 for the light. So the first thing you'll be doing is ditching the box. <coughs> so a simple rugged switch, yeah, multiple modes. Yeah, nowhere near as powerful as the other ones, but. Heaps of different things. So, for an ounce. It's a, it's a lot of light for an ounce, it really is. Now, the reason I mentioned batteries, this was a gift from Black Diamond many moons ago when I was climbing. So, the, the handle sort of here swings around to prevent you hitting the switch. It's got only one mode. But it, it has a strange battery that you find in some remote controls. It does have a tool on the back for popping the case open. So it requires disassembly to put the battery in. It is one ounce. But if you're traveling and all that, you won't find that battery easily. So that's the problem. And that's also the issue with that. That runs on two CR2032 batteries not going to be found at the small uh, outback pretty petrol station and then for the grand weenie at one point I was carrying two of these and I was on my ultralight kick so this is 14 grams it runs on the same style of batteries as that multiple modes strobe mode <coughs> I still tend to carry one of these as an emergency backup because of the strobe mode so 14 grams so there are some pretty light options. Well, I'll probably end the video here, and uh, hope I've given you guys some ideas of how to lighten your pack without killing your pocket. And uh, if you like the content I create, feel free to subscribe, it helps me out greatly, and we'll catch up to you next time.